Hey everybody, my name's Joel. Welcome to City Hill Online. Wherever you are in the world right now, we're thrilled that you found us. We're really pleased that you've decided to join us. And I just want to take a second to extend to you a really warm welcome on behalf of the City Hill family here in Dubai. Now, throughout the week, we have lots going on, which gives you the opportunity to interact with us face to face, in person, via Zoom. At the end of this video, we'll give you some information on all that is going on throughout this coming week. And if you would like to get involved or you would like us to reach out to you, answer any questions or serve you in any way, please do drop us an email info at cityhillglobal.com and we'll be sure to get in touch with you. We really want to serve you as best as we possibly can during this season. Now, in just a second, we're going to be handing over to Fusi, who's going to be kicking off our brand new series on the book of Exodus today. And we're full of faith that God has a lot to say to us through this incredible book of the Bible. But before we do that, we're going to hand over to Katie now and our city kids, and they are going to kick us off this morning. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy your time with us today. And I really pray and hope that God meets with you wherever you are. I'll see you at the end of this video. For all of you sitting at home, I wonder who your favorite superhero is and why? So my favorite superhero is um, Wonder Woman. I think she's very strong, compassionate, and she's nothing less than Superman and Batman. So yeah, Wonder Woman. My favorite superhero is Black Panther. Uh, I like this guy a lot because he's very brave. He has an amazing costume, and all those scenes are taking place somewhere far, far in the future. Wow, my favorite superheroes, there are only two. Flash and Supergirl, because they do amazing things. These two, they are totally different from other heroes, because these ones, they can save lives in just a second, just a second, and they've just saved life. <laughs> sure, I like them. Uh, my favorite hero is all time uh, He-Man and he's an animated character which I've been watching since childhood and uh, he's this regular chap walking on the street and then suddenly he raises his sword and you know he's uh, He-Man and it's like uh, He-Man I'm the master of the universe and I got so fascinated by the sword that I even bought myself one. <laughs> Hi, my favorite superhero is Hulk. Uh, I like the character that he plays. I like him because of his build, the way he looks, the way he plays his character. And uh, green is my favorite color and he happens to be in green. And yeah, I'm wearing green. My favorite superhero is the Flash because he's just so fast. And if I'm ever running late, I can just... superhero is Batman mostly because he can fly and because he has a really cool car. Last week we talked about putting on the armor of God so that we can go out into the world to tell people about Jesus and to live for Jesus. Now the armor of God protects us just like superheroes are supposed to protect people from villains. However, God does so much more than that. He is way better than any superhero. Not only does God protect us, he also protects our heart and our mind. That's something that no superhero could ever do. God is so much better than any superhero.
It was the worst of times. A time not very different from now. The World Health Organization dubbed it COVID-19. There was pestilence, there were plagues, a people isolated, enslaved, downtrodden and alone, with a burden that was too heavy to bear. There was strife, hunger and loss, a loss of identity, jobs, a loss of hope and purpose. It was the worst of times. There was suffering, there was injustice, there was uncertainty, there was blood, there was death. But through it all there remained a promise, a promise almost forgotten, made by a God who never forgets his people and his promises. A God who is ever present, a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. A God who parted the Red Sea and carried them through on dry land to the Promised Land. It was the worst of times, but things changed. There was a turning, there always is. There was freedom waiting at the shores. Freedom from the thoughts that held them captive and a life of toil and slavery. A promised land awaited. A land flowing with milk and honey. Out of the strife, the uncertainty, the hopelessness, God called them out on a journey. away from their brokenness and their shame and a past that enslaved them away from the whiplash the persecution from the land of goshen from their nights and days scheduled by the master and an identity dictated by him god called them out on a journey into their freedom towards abundance purpose and a life of meaning and identity in him. So today, in the quietness of your room and your hearts, we invite you on a journey with us. Hello everyone, my name is Fusi and I am one of the leaders of uh, City Hill Church, one of the pastors here. And I'm going to be bringing you some great news today. I'm going to be bringing you the Word of God. But before we go into the Word of God, I just want to tell you that we are introducing a new series based around the book of Exodus. It's a great book that speaks of redemption, speaks of the people of God, the Israelites, who were in Egypt for about 400 years and God comes through to save them because they were under slavery and he brings them into the wilderness. He delivers them from Pharaoh and he takes them into the promised land where he had promised that he would take them to. And it's going to be an exciting time where we when we take this time to just really reflect on this book. But what I want to ask you today is to go on a journey with us. Even as I'm introducing Exodus 1 today, I will say immediately after this time, after the preach, why don't you take some time and read the whole of Exodus 1 so that everything that I've been talking about, you'll be able to understand having just read that passage. But today, as I look at Exodus 1, I just want to ask you, right at the beginning, have you ever watched a superhero movie? 
Has any one of you, anyone, is there anyone there who's never watched a superhero movie before? I'm sure most, if not all of you, would have watched one at some point in your life. What is your favorite superhero movie? Is it Batman? Is it Spider-Man? Which one is it? The story that I'm going to be bringing to you now is very much the story of a superhero, or at least a hero in the story of the Bible. And we're going to look at the ultimate hero later, but let me bring you this story. One of the things that you pick up in every superhero movie is that you have three sets of characters. You have the victims or the people and the villain, the bad guy or the bad creature that comes and enters the scene to destroy the peace and to bring in justice, maybe to manipulate, but to kill, to destroy all that's been happening, the peace that's been there. And then you have the great hero, our superhero, who enters the scene with the view of really bringing relief and bringing victory, overcoming this villain, this bad creature, this bad person. And usually what happens is that the victims would run for cover because before the hero comes, the victims find themselves helpless and they are shouting out usually and say, we need a savior. We need someone who's going to come and redeem us. Until such time, they are helpless and completely obliterated. But when the hero comes, what he normally would do is that he would come and he will completely destroy the bad person and everyone else will run for cover so that they might be protected. They'll take refuge under his protection. And then the superhero or our hero will then have won the victory. And what follows thereafter is celebration. Everyone else celebrates what has happened. The victory does come from a superhero. So that's pretty much the story that I'm going to be bringing to you today. Because when we pick up in Exodus 1, the story of the people of God, you find that everything is going really well. Exodus 1. The people of God are doing really well in Egypt. And they are flourishing. The Bible tells us that a villain comes on the scene. And his name is Pharaoh. Or he's a Pharaoh. And this new Pharaoh comes to destroy, to kill the people of God. He brings chaos in this world of order. And then we find two ladies, at least in Exodus 1, who are there to save the day. Pharaoh wants to kill all the male children that have been born. And the two midwives are there to save lives. We always are looking for a hero. Even right now, during this pandemic, we are looking for a hero. Who is it that's going to come up with a vaccine or a cure for the coronavirus? The world is looking. The world is watching. The world is going around looking for a hero. Let me tell you, we have an ultimate hero who I'm going to be bringing to you today towards the end of this message. But go on a journey with me. Here are the three things that I want to bring to you today. The three points that are going to help you to understand the story that I'm going to bring to you. So number one, the world as it should be, God's design and his desire. I can't help but notice that in Exodus 1, the story of the people of God as it begins, it talks about how the people of God were fruitful, they were multiplying, they were filling the whole of Egypt. It's a very similar story to the story of Genesis, Genesis 1 and 2, which speaks of God creating this beautiful world and he creates man and he says, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth. You pick this up again later in Genesis where Abraham is told to do the very same thing, which means God's desire is to create a world that is so peaceful, the world that is full of justice, the world that is provided for where we don't have to struggle or strive. The world that is full of God's provision and protection. The world that is full of joy and love. That's God's desire is that we live in that kind of world. 
God's design is also that we might multiply, we might reproduce, but we also we might fill the earth, we might subdue it. God's desire and design are very much similar because God wants us to be fruitful in every way. Have you ever thought why it is that right now during this lockdown, our days feel so short and your week feels like, it's like a few days? I was saying to my wife, Emily, that I'm, I'm really struggling with that because it feels like sometimes I feel like I've not been fruitful enough because a week just feels like three days. And I feel like, what have I done? Because we were designed for a different reality. We were designed to be so fruitful in every way. That's why when we feel like we've not been fruitful, we really struggle with that. We were designed to explore. That's why we struggle at the moment because we can't fly, we can't go wherever we wanna go, we can't just walk around and do whatever we wanna do because we were designed to just go and scatter and fill the earth. That's what we were designed to do. Now you can't go on a holiday and you just feel restricted because you know very well that, hey, this is not quite how it should be. The world is created in such a way that man experiences incredible freedom the freedom to explore, the freedom to view and see nature, to see what's out there and to admire the beauty of this creation. Have you ever gone on a holiday or gone somewhere and felt like this is so good? You feel the birds chirping with you, streams of water and the beautiful noise that they, and sound of the water and the trees and you admire the beauty of creation and you see beautiful plants that you've never seen before and what we normally do i know is that we admire that beauty and we think oh this is great but we often think i want this to last and that's why we take pictures who of you love to take selfies or love to just take pictures all the time Many do. Do you know why? Because we just are designed in that way to see beauty and to admire it, to enjoy it, to think, wow, this is so great. Let me tell you, because God has created us, we're designed to be beauty observers and to, to be beauty admirers. We're also designed to go and travel and fill the earth, but the reality is that's not the case right now. We're also designed to be exploring to be fruitful as well in everything that we do. That's why at the moment, many of you are struggling. Some might be struggling with depression because you feel like the things that I'm designed to do, I can't, I can't seem to be doing them because I feel really restricted right now. I, do, I don't feel a sense of peace. I'm, I've lost my job, which means I don't feel productive. I am in debt which means I don't feel like I am being fruitful in my life. I can't have a vision. I can't think about the future. That's because it's not how God designed it. God's desire for you and his design is that we will be protected, loved, careful, and a world of justice, a system that runs in such a way that man, shalom, man's peace is found in this reality and in this world. The reality is things are not like that. We're not being able to do that. <laughs> what if you are struggling now with this lack of peace in your life? What do you do? What do you do when you struggle with fear because things are not the way they're supposed to be? Where do you turn? Where do you find your hope? Are you crying out as a victim of the current situation? Where is your hero? Who is there to save the day? That's a big question. But let me tell you, God has designed the world to be perfect. If God did it in Genesis and has designed this beautiful, amazing, perfect world, God's desire is that the world will go back into what it was before. And his mission is to bring that world into that place. It is only in Jesus and in God where a perfect, real, good world can be found. And today that's my challenge for you, is that when you look at this story, you realize that before the villain arrives, everything is looking good and only God can make it look good. Number two, something has gone terribly wrong. 
with the world. When you look at this story, the world is at peace. Everything is going really, really well until the new Pharaoh emerges. He comes and he changes the rules. The peaceful, perfect world becomes ugly. Children are being slaughtered left, right and center. Something wrong is now happening in Egypt and we now need a savior. Everyone is crying out. I can imagine you know, the noise in the, in, in the cities of Egypt with mothers crying out, trying to save their babies because Pharaoh, the villain, the bad guy has arrived. I don't know about you, but when I look around, I can't help but notice that the world is not the way it should be. The world has gone terribly wrong. Who of you agrees with me that things are not the way they should be? That the world is not doing well at the moment? That there's something terribly wrong with the world at the moment? That's what I see. That's what I witness. As I look at this story, I see very much what we are going through right now. Evil has entered the world and evil is bringing disruption. Evil has many, many faces. There are many faces of evil that we see around us, even in our world. There are many pharaohs that are around us that we are having to run away from on a daily basis. We are having to take cover almost on a daily basis. What is your pharaoh? What is the, the thing in your life that you're trying to avoid to run away from, that you're looking for cover to be protected from? It might be something different to what it is for me. But the reality is there and it doesn't just seem to be going away. It's constantly there. Maybe you deal with one and then there's another thing that comes and just kind of de destroys your peace and your joy and your protection and your provision. And you just feel a little bit exposed. There's so many faces of evil. You can think of maybe things like injustice in the world we live in the world that is just full of injustice and we are crying out we need justice something is wrong murder people can get away with so much and we see that we watch it on tv the bullies of this world are just running around and they get away with so much more what about human trafficking where children and people are snatched from their children are snatched from their parents' arms and being sold into slavery or trafficked and sold somewhere else. Or people are being sold and they've disappeared for many, many years. What about the killing of the, the unborn or the children of those who have no rights and uh, or they have no voice and they can't speak for themselves? They can't, they can't say, come on now, I want justice. There's a, there are many, many faces of injustice. What about tyranny? What about oppression? What about slavery? There are so much, so many things that we are dealing with and having to deal with constantly on a daily basis. Exploitation of the world's resources, whereby in some parts of the world, the poor are just getting poorer and poorer. In fact, I think that's happening everywhere. It's survival of the fittest and the strong eating the weak. For many of us, we want to see justice. We want to see peace, probably all of us actually. I don't know who doesn't want to see peace and justice. We want to see the world becoming a good place for us to live, a better place for our children to grow up in, a place where we can call our home, a place, a place that looks beautiful, a place that we can admire, a place where we don't have to always be fearful and running for cover, a place that doesn't have uncertainties all the time. But the reality is it's not like that. It is different. It's a place where discrimination, systemic injustice, or things like viruses are just so easy to grow and to be so prevalent in our society. You, you see that, that the world is just at the moment a fertile soil for things like viruses to just happen, pandemics and many other things to happen. And we always are running for cover. We are running for protection. We are in lockdown, even as we speak right now. The world is not the way it should be. Things have gone really, really wrong. And we need to recognize that. We need to see that. It's not to make you feel depressed, but it's to show you the reality of for the world we live in right now, that things are different. 
But for many of us, we are seeing that this is not how it should be. And we're fighting that it should change so much. That's why in some countries, people protest. Why do you do that? You do that because you are looking for change. In some places, you have what you call human rights. You're fighting for human rights because you think it shouldn't be like this. In some places, you are wanting to restore peace. That's like uh, reconciliation, truth and reconciliation commissions and places where people want to see restoration and reconciliation of human beings. There are places where people are actually wanting to see animals being saved and being delivered from those who might be abusing them. Why is it that you want to do that? Because for some of you who might have not encountered the God of the Bible, you are believing or have believed that this is nature running its course. This is how things are supposed to be. Because we've just evolved. We are creatures in this world who've just evolved and we are just, this is how it's just supposed to be. Because if we've evolved to become what we are now, it just means nature is just running its course. It just means really we can't fight it. Maybe we shouldn't fight it. But I know you don't believe that. I, don't, I know you don't believe that we should just be living our lives without fighting for what is good, without trying to get the world back to how we want it to be. You see, the view that you hold might be quite inconsistent because if you believe that nature should run its course, if you believe that this is how things are just supposed to be, but at the same time, you're fighting for justice, then you are very inconsistent. Let me tell you this, the God of the Bible and the Bible itself believes that things have gone terribly wrong and only God is the great hero of the day who's going to come and change our reality and make it the way it's supposed to be. The pharaoh of our world right now, whether it's a virus, whether it's human trafficking, whether it's slavery, whatever it is, poverty and many other faces of evil, they are not the norm. They are, we cannot accept the status quo. And we need our hero. We need to be calling out to the one who can come and save the day. And the Bible tells us that that one is Jesus Christ. Which brings us to number three, point number three. The Redeemer, the Savior is with us. He is here. When you go back to this story in Exodus 1, you pick up that there are these two midwives. And their names are Shifra and poor, unusual names. But these two ladies have been told by Pharaoh that they are to kill their male children as they are born. And as they deliver the babies, they are to kill them. But they don't believe that's what they are there for. As midwives, they are there to save lives. So what they go on to do is that they end up saving many, many male Israel children instead of killing them to a point that Pharaoh is angry and he is furious and he wants them to be held to account and he decides to do things his own way. He's not going to trust the midwives anymore because they've let him down. These two midwives, what they're doing is that they are saying, we're not going to give in to this. We've got, we're not going to give in to the system. We're not going to give in to evil. We don't want to associate with this evil. We are here to save lives. We are here for justice. We are here for peace. We are here for joy, love, and restoration because that's what we designed to, to live in a world that has these things. But I want to draw you to their names and just explore a little bit about their names because I believe, as the Bible says, behind their actions was the God of redemption who was doing things through them, that God had planned this beforehand. That's why he'd given them these names. The name Shifra it means beauty. It's an incredible name. And actually, what you are picking up from this story is that these ladies were bringing beauty in a world that was so ugly, a world that was full of chaos, beauty emerged. And I believe that the God of the Bible is the God who's able to bring beauty out of chaos. Where there's ugliness, he can really bring beauty to restore the world to how it should be. 
He is the God who has the power to transform circumstances and things that look really bad and turn them. And we look back and say, wow, I wasn't expecting that. God certainly has done amazing things. We see that in the Bible. It's so clear. Maybe your background, you are looking at your background, things you've done in your life, and you're thinking, goodness, I've done some ugly things in my life. Look at my background. Look at my track record. It's very ugly. This horrible things that I've done. I'm not proud of some of the things I've done. I'm not proud of myself. I don't dare to tell people about some of the things I've done because I'm so ashamed of them. Do you know what? You have a shifra in your life, a beauty bringer, the one who can bring beauty in this world. And his name is Jesus Christ. He's our beauty. He's the one that reveals the beauty of God. We are not sorted. It doesn't matter who you are because we live in the world that has fallen. And when we call on to God, he is the one who sorts us out. He is the one who can bring beauty out of us and turn our lives that look so ugly and turn them and make them look beautiful. You don't have to do it yourself because it's impossible. You can't. But when you trust in God, he has the power to turn your life around. He has the power to turn the ugliness of this world and the chaos of this world into a most beautiful, beautiful outcome. And he's done it through the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus faced evil, the worst kind of evil, the ultimate evil. He faced punishment for the things he'd never done. He faced suffering for things he'd never done. And on the cross, Jesus took our punishment. He took our suffering. He took our shame. He took our ugliness upon himself. That that cross, which was an ugly picture of the world, God turned it around into the most beautiful picture of the world. Because now the cross symbolizes beauty, that things can change. When we come to Jesus, we can go from ugliness into beauty because God is beautiful and he's drawing us to himself and restoring us into a people associated with beauty. Are you not sorted? Are you not proud of the things you've done in your life? <laughs> We're not proud of things we've done in our lives, but we don't live in regrets. You know why? Because we've taken all the things that we've done in our lives and we cast them at the feet of Jesus Christ. And he is the one who's taken them and he's given us his beauty. Do you want God's beauty today? Come as you are, just as you are. Because we all have to come just as we are. We bring all our ugliness. We bring all the things that we've done and we bring them to Jesus. And he's the one who's going to turn this chaos. He's going to turn our lives, the things we're not proud of. He's going to turn them into beauty. He's capable of that. And only God can do that. And I'm inviting you today to come to Jesus. Shifra. The second midwife, her name is Pua. That's an interesting name, Pua. I've never come across a name like that except for here in the Bible. I don't know if you know. Do you know anyone called Pua? I've never come across it. But here's the story. And here's a, a character in the story named Pua. It means all kinds of things. But it also means to murmur or... At, at the kind of sound that a nurturing woman makes to soothe an infant when an infant is in pain or crying, that, that woman will make that kind of noise or that sound to kind of comfort and to soothe the pain of this nurturing uh, baby. It's a way of looking after, caring for, sympathizing, comforting someone who is really in pain. That's what this name represents. And these two midwives were doing exactly that. They were comforting. They were going from house to house and, re and really restoring lives and bringing life to uh, people as they were dying. <laughs> Jesus is doing that. Jesus has the power and has the sympathy to come alongside each and every one of us, to come alongside those who are sick right now and to stand with you, to stand over you, whether it's in a hospital or at home, 
If you are sick with coronavirus, he is the one who can come to comfort you. He can speak words that will soothe the pain and he can bring healing in your life. Jesus is the one. For those who are lost, you feel you are depressed. You don't know what's going on with your life right now. Jesus has the power to come and say, I can identify with what you're going through because I felt the same on the cross. But what I want to do to you is I want to bring you to myself. I want to bring deliverance. And he can do that in your life. Jesus is the one who is able to sympathize and empathize with people who have lost their jobs. And he can stand with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He has come to be the one who's going to comfort those who mourn, who's going to stand with those who are sick, who's going to stand with those who are lonely. Are you lonely? Are you in pain? Are you suffering? Are you stressed out? Are you depressed? Are you looking for hope? Are you looking for comfort? Come to Jesus Christ. He has the answer for all those things that I've mentioned. He's your beauty and he's your comfort. And today I want to invite you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if he's not your Lord and Savior, I want to say to you today, he is the hero who is going to come and destroy the powers that are, and he's going to bring justice into this life. If you don't know him, I'm going to pray that you receive Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, I need you right now. I know I'm not sorted, but I hear that you are our Savior and our hero. And today I want to run for cover. I want to come to you. I want to pray today that you save me from my life right now, that you transform me, that you become the victor, the one who overcomes in my life. I give my life to you. I surrender my life to you. Come and save me. Come and deliver me. I pray today. Come and comfort me. Come and reveal beauty in my life, even when I can't see it. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, you have invited Jesus into your life. If you are outside of our country where we are, look for a local church where you can belong, where people can help you to grow in your relationship with Jesus. But if you are in our country where we are, in the UAE, I would say send us an email at info at cityhillglobal.com and we'll follow up with you and we will help you to walk with you on this journey to discover more about Jesus. God bless you and enjoy your day. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand Oh, 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 oh In Christ alone took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ i live oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh,
Light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his. He is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Oh, 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 no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Thanks again for tuning in this morning. We're really pleased that you decided to join us and I hope that you had a great time interacting with us and hearing from the Word of God with us. As I said earlier, there are many ways that you can interact with us and get involved in all that we do throughout the week as a church. In just a second, you'll see some slides that will take you through all that we've got going on. If you wanna get involved, and we hope you do, just drop us an email and we'll be sure to reach out to you straight away and get you connected in. Now, before you turn the video off, just one last thing. Why don't you hit that subscribe button just below this screen? And that way you'll be informed of all the videos, all the content and all the resources that we put onto our YouTube channel. We would love to continue connecting with you and we would love to continue serving you as best as we possibly can. So until next week, God bless. We'll see you soon.